And welcome back to the Spinner Rack, presented by Comics Remix, episode 63. As always, I'm your host, Big B. Brian Adams, joining my co-host. Ruiz. We're going to get right into it. I'm going to start right it. off Let's with what we showed you, what I just showed you. That short teaser, short ass teaser, Jessica Jones. See, you just chose your wording wrong because you're like short, the ass teaser of Jessica Jones. Whatever. It was a short ass teaser. It was um, less than a minute. That did absolutely nothing for me. Yeah, no. All she does, her alarm goes off at three o'clock in the afternoon. There's a bunch of liquor bottles and clothes everywhere, and she crushes her alarm clock. Yeah. And teaser. Yeah, I, I didn't even know she had super strength. That shows you how much I know about Jessica. I Jones. just saved everyone forty eight seconds. Yeah, totally. Of Seriously. Their lives. You you just it's really funny that you said that at the almost forty eight mark of the show. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean I'm excited for the show in general. But that teaser did nothing for me. Yeah, not really. It wasn't much of a teaser. Um, it really doesn't say anything about who the character is, you know. She's an alcoholic slob with super strength. That's what I got from her. Yeah, yeah, totally. That, and, uh, and unless that's what they're trying to put out there. May, maybe they're trying to push her as to be the female Constantine. Yeah, that would be a bad Without the supernatural opinion, stuff. You know? Yeah, without the supernatural stuff, I, I still think it's a terrible idea. I wouldn't... Uh, I wouldn't be into that at all. At all. Um, yeah, no. That's just, yeah. <laughs> um, I am, ex- ex- you know, I mean, I'll watch it. November 20th, for those that don't know, Netflix, you know, binge watching. You got to appreciate that. Right. Um, you know, so it's it's one of those things to where if you like it, you're not going to have to wait weeks and weeks of time to go by to watch the shows to decide whether you like it or not. Uh, so I do appreciate the Netflix been watching. The reason I just said that, Fear the Walking Dead, pretty much fear I'm done with that f-ing show. Yeah? Oh yeah, dude. It's just, you know. How many uh, episodes uh, are they in? Five, they, are, they are five in now. I have just watched the third one and like very disappointed, man. Yeah? Very disappointed. It just wasn't. What, this, what, what is it about this show that you don't like? Because I know, haven't watched it. I don't, excuse me. The problem for me is, is that it's not, it's, it's building like, uh, you're giving me a bunch of characters, first of all, that I couldn't give two d**ks about. Okay. I don't care about these people. I don't want to care about these people. Um, you're, you're, they're, they're trying to tell the story of the initial beginning of the outbreak through the eyes of people that are experiencing the outbreak as it's happening. But it's, they're slow rolling and hard. Which I felt like they would have learned from previous seasons of The Walking Dead. Um, that slow rolling is something you shouldn't do. You know, is this, is this something now where they're explaining how this thing began? Like how the zombies came to be? Is that what they're finally doing? I wish. Oh, so they're not doing that either? No. That's okay. what the show should have been. Okay. But it's not. It basically centers around for people that haven't watched and for you since obviously you haven't. About this mixed interracial couple, I believe he's either I think he's Mexican and a, a white woman and their their kids. Um, she has two kids. Her son is a, a heroin addict. Uh, her daughter is just a normal kid, and then he has a son that kind of hates him because they just don't get along. He lives with his mother, and it's the drug addict son is the one that that has the first run in with the zombie. Okay, and then he's like in the hospital because he's all strung out on drugs, and it's just. It's just been really boring and really bad. And I believe Dennis Barger pointed out that the kid, uh, when he was in the hospital, he escaped from the hospital because the they weren't letting him out. And for some reason, he talked to the nurse into like, re- undoing one of his restraints for some reason. And then a patient in the same room with him started to go into cardiac arrest. And she didn't pay attention to him. And then he escaped and he stole. But anyway, my whole point is that he's been wearing these same old man's clothes for three or four episodes now. And they don't really look right. They look goofy on him. And you've been at home. Why wouldn't you, like, put on your own clothes? Why would you still be in filthy? I was in a drug den and almost got eaten by a zombie and then been in the hospital. Why would you not have taken a shower yet? Why would you not have put on your own clothes? You know, it's... it's. Uh, I like how your problem with this show is just this, the most simplest things. Well, no, that's and just... It's, it's just something that... That's just a issue. Right, but it's, it's just something that they've obviously could have avoided you know yeah. it's, it's petty 
And then you've got like the slow, the, the characters aren't like, they're trying to make the characters relatable and they're not. Um, I, so they're I, forcing it. I also point out to Melissa that the majority of the cast is, uh, is minorities. Yeah. And I shouldn't even say that they're minorities. The majority of the cast is Latino. Okay. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I feel like, is this like a, a, a stunt by AMC because the Walking Dead's cast is so lily white that they had to try they're and trying get... They're trying to rope in the to, Latino yeah, market? Yeah, exactly. I got you. Um, the, the show sucks. It's really... You're, you're really getting a, a lighter version of The Walking Dead that's not already in the universe set up. They're doing it really slow. It's been uninteresting. It's been kind of boring. The zombies you have gotten have been okay. It's just like... It's not what I wanted, you know? So let me ask you. By the time the first season ends... If they pick up the pace tenfold, and it, and you hear word of mouth that it's become like some really really kick ass show, would you go back and rewatch it? Okay, this is I'm glad you brought it up. I we just Melissa and I just watched the third episode the other night because you know we have a two year old, so we can't be watching crazy zombie stuff when he's awake, so we have to bide our time. I was disappointed through the whole episode. It was slow. The pacing was just dragging. I was getting bored of it, and in the last five minutes totally turned everything around and i was like well i think this show sucks but i'd be willing to watch the next episode because the military shows up so it's kind of like tna yeah yeah totally i I hate it but i I, for some reason i keep watching um except i don't hate this show yet now my whole problem with this show is i felt like this would have been the perfect opportunity to give us a look on the zombie apocalypse from a different perspective of not of people experiencing it because that's what walking dead is the walking dead is these people that have come together and, and they're they're living through it yes i understand it's the beginning and it hasn't really gotten full blown yet but that's not the interesting part in my opinion the interesting part would have more been getting into the government reaction to what's going on and like uh from like the perspective of the cdc and then watching things fall apart right. i don't need we don't need the everyman. I don't need someone to relate to. I don't want to see that. And I feel like a lot of people feel the same way because there's a lot of vitriol towards the show. Mm-hmm. Not many people like it. And, you know, I can understand why. It's, you know, fear the walking suck. <laughs> um, that said, I'm, I'm really glad that when the season ends, we'll be getting back to the real Walking Dead. Because that's, you know, I need it. I need my fix because this isn't working. Um, Hugh Jackman Wolverine and Wolverine apparently he says that they're going to address the uh, father son relationship between him and Patrick or Patrick Stewart's Professor Xavier okay. which means I guess we'll be getting a Professor Xavier cameo in the movie uh, from, for Wolverine 3 for Wolverine 3 Okay, I think from what I've been reading uh, I also read Mark Miller had some thoughts on Wolverine 3 I'll get to in a minute that um, it doesn't sound like that they're going to do Old Man Logan. Good. It sounds like Old Man Logan might have been a rumor, although with what Mark Miller said, did nothing to confirm or deny it. What um, if they just age Wolverine in the movie and Wolverine is an old man? You know what I, you I know, mean? Yeah. Well, kind of like how old man kind of like how it was Age of Ultron, but it wasn't Age of Ultron. Right. I could see that. Um, I guess they're going to start shooting next year. He's he's training. He's trying to get physically and mentally prepared for it. Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman. Um, the guy who's been physically prepared for Wolverine. Yeah, seriously. For, for years. For years now. Is, yeah. I don't know. I what, like how he uh, got swoller after the yeah, first X-Men seriously, movie. Seriously, right? <laughs> you know, that's that whole rich thing. I, I'm now rich, so I have money, and I don't have to like worry about afford, making money. I can afford a personal yeah, trainer. And I can go to the gym every day. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so pretty much it's also said with, with his talk about how, you know, they're going to get more into the relationship between, you know, him and Professor Xavier and how it's kind of like a father-son thing. And, you okay. know, sees Xavier as a mentor. Well, yeah, yeah. And at the same time, they have debunked the rumors that it would be based on Old Man Logan. Good, because that the ideas for Old Man Logan in a Fox-related movie would just not work. Now, that, that, hey, thanks for giving me a segue. Okay, you're welcome. Because um, 
Oh my God, my brain fart. Malar would disagree with you. Really? Yeah. Malar says that it's not really important. Well, he would know he wrote. The he damn has story. exactly. Well, he 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 also had comments on Civil War. Okay, I want to hear this. What, so, what, is, what does Mark Millar okay, have to say? Okay, so I'm, I respect Mark Millar. Yeah, as a writer. So, so do I. I think he's a great writer. I've loved everything he's done. Uh, Kingsman, awesome, kick ass. Uh, the guy, the guy is certified as a. He will be one of the writers twenty years from now. People still talk about. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it's a great comic book writer. I love all his stuff. He has said that it's really these stories are really just about. That's just the story. You've got to break it down to the key elements. So all you need is Wolverine going on a road trip. He doesn't have to have a blind Hawkeye. He said, since it's set in the X-Men universe, you could just use a Cyclops whose quartz visor is broken so he can't see because he can't open his eyes. Okay. And then you would just have him have to have him driving whatever said vehicle because obviously you won't get the spider buggy. Right. But I think that was kind of a tongue in cheek thing, really, and more fan service than anything. Right. Um, and he also said, like, as far as the Hulk, you know, being the villain towards the end of the story, that you could use like the Blob, or that you could find a villain and heroes suited to play the character roles that you need. That aren't owned by fox within the x-men universe i could see that That you could replace red skull with someone else you know obviously spoiler alert you could replace mysterio no with someone way else, you know the, that was by the way greatest use of mysterio in a comic ever i don't know about that and really i don't know I, about I thought that. It was the guardian devil storyline from kevin smith one of my favorite mysterio stories really i'll have to read that you never read it nope Dude, no. you've never read Guardian Devil. No, nope, never read Guardian Devil. Oh my god! Devil. Look, we got to segue into this. Okay, like, we just totally got to go. So, Guardian Devil is Daredevil waking up and finding a baby being put into his possession, a newborn baby. So he's like, "What do I do with this kid? Why am I entrusted with this kid?" Black Widow's helping him out, you know. Um, then there's little things coming here and there that say that baby is the Antichrist. You need to kill that baby. So now Matt is like, what am I supposed to do? I can't take an infant's life. You know? Right. And it drives him to the point where he does throw the, if I remember correctly, does throw the baby off a roof. But then Black Widow is there and she grabs the baby and she slaps sense into Matt. Like, are you stupid? You can't kill a child. So the question is brought in, you know, if you can go back and murder Hitler before he grew up and did all the stuff that he did, would you do it? So that's the point of it. So then at the end, after all this is said and done, and Matt Murdock is being driven crazy with this Antichrist baby, it's revealed that the baby is just a regular baby, not the Antichrist, and it was Mysterio who orchestrated the whole thing because he ended up buying Matt Murdock's identity off of the kingpin. Nice. And his whole thing was he just wanted to go out in a blaze of glory and finally get the comeuppance on a superhero because he was tired of being laughed at and defeated by Spider-Man so much. So when he revealed it all, he's like, I still have one more trick. He was like, and yeah, it's not original, just like everything else I do. And he's like, what do you mean? And he grabs a shotgun and blows his own brains out. A la Craven the Hunter. Wow. Dude, it was one of the greatest. That's hardcore. You need to go read that. I'm, I, I'm t- yeah, that's, that you is now on my that. read list, man. Um, Moving back to... And that's where they kill Karen Page. Really? I believe that's the storyline they kill Karen Page. Huh. Interesting. You know, I don't really follow Daredevil. Dude, that Daredevil run from Marvel Knights when it launched with Quesada and Kevin Smith Uh through the end because it was Quesada, Kevin Smith, and then I know David Mack worked on it for a little bit, but then that's when Bendis took over, Bendis and Alex Malib, that whole run, that's when they introduced Lady Bullseye, that's when Daredevil's identity got outed to the public... That the Guardian Devil. I mean, that whole man. That was one of my favorite. It was like a little over a hundred issues total. Nice. Need to hit that torrent site and, and grab that, son. <laughs> so Civil War. Mark Millar uses the same, basically, sensibilities that he used on Old Man Logan, and says anyone that says that Civil War wouldn't work because of the lack of like Fantastic Four, 
because the Fantastic Four did play a big role in Civil War. I don't think they did. As far as the splitting of like the family and them being on different sides. And stuff. But that was more, in my opinion... In the Fantastic Four book? Yeah. yeah. Not in the main book. The well, only thing that happened in the main book was Johnny Storm got uh, his ass stomped outside a nightclub. A lot of what he said in reference to both of these pieces of material, Old Man Logan and Civil War, was that it's a lot of fanboys that are the ones that are are complaining about this stuff okay and that mo- people that go see these movies aren't going to care or that's not going to really notice that when it comes to civil war the only thing that's important is the registration act right that's that was, it that was that was the purpose of he it. says yeah. that's the only the only purpose mm-hmm. and that you have iron man feeling like yeah if people are walking around with like quote unquote nuclear reactors on their back that's an yeah. actual quote that he would feel like that they should have to register with the government and you know that we know what you're doing and you work for them. Right. Where Captain America coming from a different time feels like, you know, those people's identities need to be protected. Right. And that they should, you know, that's that was pre- That's pretty much how it was. Which is the, pretty much what the book the was. Only, the only difference was what set it off. Yeah. You know, obviously the New Warriors and Nitro and mm-hmm. destroying the, 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 the town and the elementary school and all the children and everything. Whereas the basis for the Civil War movie was the end of Age of Ultron. Right. Like Ultron lifting the city up and then having trying to have it come crashing back down mm-hmm. to create the the meteor effect and whatnot. So that's that's the uh, the catalyst right. for the superhero registration act and whatnot. So I'm just glad Spider Man's a part of the Marvel universe. Yeah, no totally. I'm I'm excited to and see And I that. love that they've said that they're skipping the origins, that that's been done to death. No only so many times you can watch Uncle Ben die. <laughs> True that man. So I'm I'm that movie cannot get here soon enough. And you know when we sit here and think about this, man? Deadpool's only four months away. Batman Superman's five months away. But I don't care. I'm waiting for Civil War. That's my movie, man. I'm so, waiting. You know, my eyes are on the prize, and that's December and the return of the Force. Yes. I, I, oh, my God. You know, I snooze on that. I, I don't... I've, I've actually got, got that. I got that... Uh, I got the blinders on for that one. That'll buddy. be my... Uh, I actually have that Friday off, so I can go watch it Thursday night. Nice. I'm 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 there. I'm totally there for it. So yeah, there's no so, way I was gonna let that movie go by you know, the weekend and uh, then have to hear everybody third hand how it was. Yeah, totally. It's totally that, that's something I I've got to go out and see. Um, wrapping up on Millar, you know, spot on dude, with everything he said. Yeah, it makes sense. Not that I ever had any doubts that Civil War wouldn't be good. But it was the old man Logan. I but remember. But the old man questioned. Logan thing, I questioned hard. Yeah, we had a, we we did that in a previous episode. We um, talked about it. Apparently. Matt Damon says that he would play Daredevil if Christopher Nolan asked him. I saw that. What? I saw that. Like, seriously? Isn't it a little late for now? Yeah. Like, it's you're a little late to the party, son. Yeah. No, I like the guy that they have on Netflix. Charlie Cox, I believe his name is? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. No, he, he's good. He's good. Keep dude, him. he's great. Bring him into the Marvel CU. Um, I, I felt when I first saw him that I was like, uh... Charlie Cox? But he's, yeah. Yeah. He's, in my opinion, has totally... Yeah, no, he's good. He's good. Totally... I'm waiting on uh, John. Uh, Into it. What's his name? Bernthal. Yeah, I, I can never pronounce his last name. Yeah, as the Dude, he's looking good as the Punisher, man. Dude, he's looking good. I can't wait for that. I can't believe people even had their doubts about him. That's going to be stellar. Yeah, apparently, I guess Matt Damon um, was offered the role of Daredevil originally. Yeah. In 2003, and turned it down. He should have went because he looked at the, he looked more like Matt Murdock, and I I've gone on record numerous times and said that that he should. Yeah, absolutely. It. But apparently he said if Christopher Nolan came up to him and said, you know, I want to do Daredevil, that he would be into doing a trilogy of Daredevil films like the blockbuster Dark Knight. Too late, dude. Too late. Too late. But here's here's the question I don't know if anybody's asked yet. What sparked this? I don't... You Why know, would Matt Damon just come out of the blue and just be like, oh, if Christopher Nolan said, let's do Daredevil, I'd do it. Like, well, where in the world did that even come He was talking to New York Daily News about the new movie he's in The Martian. Okay. And somehow they discussed superhero films. And then I guess it came up of what, who would he want to play? Gotcha. So that that's how it came in. We'll see how uh, how the internet and then he said for to take that and run with it. For him, it was Daredevils. With that for him, it was always Daredevil. You know, they read it when they were kids. He said of him and Ben Affleck. Mm. So I guess him and Affleck as children were were fans. Yeah. Um, well, Affleck that that's no secret. He's always been a fan. I didn't know Matt Damon was. Yeah. I knew Affleck was a Daredevil fan. So apparently, you know, I I would want to see that. Um, I did read this funny thing that people I was reading I showed you before the thirteen problems that people don't acknowledge about the upcoming DC, the movie universe universe yeah. that uh, 
one of the things was they felt like that Nolan needed to have a deeper hand in it. And I felt like, doesn't he already? Does he? It doesn't he? Isn't he like an executive producer on these movies? I, I don't know. I don't and then remember. they're giving way too much credit to Josh Whedon, whoever wrote this article. Way too much credit to Joss on the success of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. When, in my opinion, like, what did he have a hand in? Just two Avengers films, and one of them sucked. Yeah, but at the same time, that of that first Avengers film is what snowballed everything into what it is now. Mm-hmm. You know, because I I think that Marvel Cinematic, the future of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, could have broke if Avengers would have bombed really really hard. No, oh, yeah, totally. You know, then they would have been like, okay, but I, I could see why they're coming in with that. But you know what, man? If anybody's gonna take uh, Whedon's mantle on this, it's the Russo brothers, because they're they're direct, directing. They directed Winter Soldier, they're directing Civil War, and they're directing the Avengers Infinity Wars. So, um, they, in my opinion, because didn't uh, Whedon say he was done anyway? Yeah, he's done. He had, there was a lot of creative differences with him and, and Marvel. the studio on Age of Ultron, and he's done. Now, what I don't understand is, like, why do people diss Snyder so hard? I got no problem with Snyder. 300 was good. Oh, that's Snyder. I thought you missed Scott Yeah, Snyder. Zack, Zack Snyder. Snyder. No, not, okay. not, no yeah, we're not talking Scott. We're talking Zack Snyder. Okay. We're talking the movie director. 300 was good. I like Watchmen 300. was excellent. Watchmen was probably the best adaptation of a superhero movie. Yeah, Minus seriously. the end. Because they Minus, changed the end. But yeah, it was but, still a good movie. But it would have never, like, with them dropping big, big, huge alien squids on Manhattan and stuff really yeah. worked. No, no. It like, not. what he did was, was well-crafted. No, it was. It I, was I, a great movie. I, I agree. I agree. I'll give him that. I, I so like how can you say that? And then there's one thing that think people need to gloss over. I like how he did the Rorschach mask. Is uh, the Rorschach, yeah, the Ro- the, that was great. How it always the, the switched. Ink, the ink yeah. spots. Um, I think this is something that's never, never been brought up when people are talking about how D- it's it's the focus is on DC's rushing it. DC's rushing it, or I should say, DC Warner Brothers is rushing it. But this this may be true. But take the two movies that started it all for each universe. Iron Man and Man, and Man of, Steel. of Steel. Okay. Did you know that Man of Steel made more money than Iron Man did? Yeah. I could see that. So, come on. Have a little faith, dude. I could see that. I think Dawn of Justice is going to be great. I think where it Because you got to remember, at the time movies. when Iron Man came out, you'd be like, hey, do you want to go watch an Iron Man movie? Do you want to watch Superman? People are like, right, yeah. no, I don't want to watch Iron Man. Yeah, I want to watch Superman. Totally. So... And then, speaking of the DC Cinematic U, Momoa oh, man. has teased that there will be some, some bits of orange and green in the costume. So that there will be some hints of the comic book Aquaman hmm. in his costume. Um, he's confirmed that, uh, that he's a little bit meaner and he's a little upset. I was going to say, have we gotten any... Any uh, new plot details? Yeah, like on the movie? Batman Superman, nothing. Oh, uh, Batman Superman, nothing. Uh, the only thing that I have heard is that that whole. Are we gonna get a new trailer with Star? I'm assuming when the Star Wars movie comes out in December, we're gonna we'll get, get tra- some uh, some sort of ec- just extremely badass comic book trailers. Whether it's Batman, I honestly think we're gonna get an updated Batman Superman trailer, and we're gonna get the Civil War trailer. Yeah, that would make that would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, but uh, yeah, nothing, nothing really on uh, Aquaman to this point. Um, but I do understand, like him being a more pissed off Aquaman makes sense. Yeah, and if it doesn't make sense to other people, like I've been preaching to everyone since Man of Steel, you cannot look at these, at these, at this new universe through these rose tinted friggin' glasses of nostalgia and what you've read in comic books. This ain't the Super Friends. This is not Super Friends. There will be no Hall of Justice, as cool as that might be. There, there might be. You don't. Know oh, maybe, yeah, maybe. I kind of doubt it though. If there is, it'll be some kind of silly nod. But There's I don't be no feel like Wonder they're going to do that stuff. Yeah, there will be no Wonder Twins. There will be no. What was his name? Gleep. Something like that. Gleek, whatever the hell his name was. That stupid little monkey. Um, it would make sense for Aquaman to be pissed off, you know? Yeah, of course. The oceans are messed up, man. Mankind has polluted the shit out of the oceans. Yep. We're ruining things. It would make sense for him to be pissed off about this. So, I mean, in my opinion, where they're hitting with their cinematic universe makes complete sense as the world, as the view of the world today. Today. 
Right. If you looked at it as happening now, it makes complete sense. If you don't think so, then you're just you're just a dick, and you're arguing because you're. It's just come on. You're arguing for the sake of arguing, which I feel like a lot of people do. I've had so many Superman, Man of Steel arguments, dude. It's not even funny. I love how we can just make a phone call to a couple of people right now and it'd still be the same thing. They'd still argue. Still the same thing. Even though you could give them a hundred mil- No, well, that's not... Like, that's like the fallback argument. Well, that's not my Superman. It's like, well, no, it's not. That's the whole point. Like, you're not going to get your Superman. Yeah, you're, you're, yeah, you're absolutely not going to get your same, Superman. In 20 years, the kids who are growing up with Superman now... They're going to be like, oh, well, if they make another Superman movie in 20 years, they're like, well, that's not my Superman. They're yeah. going to know their Superman is the one from Man of Steel. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. You know? I, I agree 100%. And then they'll laugh at the uh, the, the original Superman, you know? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I would think so. What if in 20 years they make a movie based uh, based off of emo Superman? And they're like, oh, this is a Superman for these kids. Hey, man, if that's, if that's what they do, if it's good, I'll, I'll say it's good. If it's not, well... A la Suicide Squad. Yeah. yeah. You know, I wait don't want to see, beat that horse see, anymore. Wait and see. It's a total wait and see. I don't want to beat that horse anymore. I also think that's going to be the worst interpretation of the Joker that we've ever seen. But that's just me. You know, I mean, I, I, I think it'll be terrible. Speaking of interpretations on a character, people are, there's speculation on who could be the new Wolverine. And I kind of like the cut of the, his jib. There are people are saying, and there's been fan art that's put out. I don't know if you've seen it. Not really fan art, but I mean, I guess you could call it fan art. But Tom Hardy as Wolverine. I've heard that. There's the picture know. for you. Mm, not Do you bad. not see that? Yeah, it looks pretty good. Right? That looks good. He would be a good replacement, dude, for Jackman, I think. That looks good. He's got a he's got an angrier, more pissed off look. Yeah, that's very true. Which Jackman doesn't really have. He's got his nose looks like he looks like he's been in some fights. Yeah. Jackman's a little too pretty. Jackman is pretty. Do we have any comic news? Not really. It's it's a lot of uh it's a lot of you know, there's there's some uh some DC's doing some sweet Halloween covers. Yeah. Next month. Nice. Batman Day was last week. Batman Day was last week, which is just a new retailer thing, I suppose. Yeah, same thing. As we were discussing. Uh, you know what, man? There's... Oh, you know what? I do have some comic book news for you. Okay. Later and on. I don't know if you've heard this or not. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 50 comes out very soon. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. That's a great book if you're not reading the IDW, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You're doing yourself a disservice because it's great. That's the Boom only book I'm reading. Boom Studios. Oh, it might. After this announcement... You might have to add something else. Let's go. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I'm there. I'm there. Have you not? Have you heard about it at all? Yeah, they at San Diego. They had um, one shots, I believe. Oh, really? Yeah. Of uh, you might have seen the. They look like I thought they were art prints, but then I found out they were comics. Where the cover was just the ranger holding the helmet, and all you saw was like from the, their torso of them holding that. You didn't uh-huh. see anything up here. Have you seen those? And they're like paintings. Those are supposedly one shots. They were only available there. Well, there's a, a, a zero issue coming out. Oh, I'm so, on it. I'm on it already. I got to call the shop and be like, you need to pull that book for me. All covers, sir. I'm on it. I'll check it out, man. Dude, I'll check it out. I don't know. It. I didn't get anything on who the art team or you know, I don't what care. the team was on the book. but If Boom has enough, uh, um, if they got enough faith. That they're putting out a Power Rangers comic because they believe it's going to sell, then I believe as well that they're not going to put a crap team on it, especially when you got the movie coming out. Is that no? That's twenty. Is that twenty sixteen or twenty seventeen? Do you remember? It's probably twenty seventeen. Okay. Yeah, because they haven't announced anything for cast or anything. Yeah, yet. I would. I would. It might even be twenty eighteen. How could even be twenty twenty? No, it's not that far it off. Could, you know, it's, no, it's, it's either sixteen or seventeen. Because you got to figure they need at least three to six months to do principal photography, then they need another six months to do digital effects, then you got to you know seventeen. So it's it at the earliest seventeen. Um, yeah, this has been. I will admit this has been a very heavy movie and TV episode, but it was a lot of the news this Speaking week. Speaking of TV, if you have not had a chance to uh, watch the first season of The Flash or the third season of Arrow, they're both on DVD right now, and you've got about two to three weeks before the new seasons debut on TV. October fourth. 
Really? Yeah. Two okay, weeks. so you got about two weeks. So a week, a week from a week from this show, the first flash should so be on. So go pick up that first season yeah. and binge watch it. It, it. Definitely binge watch the Flash. Arrow, Arrow was good, but the Flash is. Well, doesn't the Arrow best premiere show. towards the end of October? No. Really? Yeah, it's next two weeks. Well, a week from this airing of the show, Tuesday. I believe it is. It might be October fifth. Okay. You got That's Flash. Monday. Monday's the fifth. Is it the fifth? Because yeah, the fourth is a Sunday. We were just talking about that before we started recording. Okay, you're right. So it's the sixth. It's Tuesday. You got Flash and iZombie returns. Okay. And then Wednesday, you've got the return of Arrow. Gotcha. Which Go pick uh, those up, people. So to close my last little bit of uh, TV news, there's this stupid poll going on by on CBR who I have been critical of CBR of doing dumb things in the past. I have something to add, but go ahead. And that was, the poll is, did Gotham season two improve with Rise of the Villains? Okay, at this point, dude, we're like, really? We're like two episodes into the season. Yeah, you can't. You can't Can you really it. judge the season two on two friggin' episodes? No. Not at all. So, But uh, you might get the same argument from the people who were judging the first season of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. off the first two episodes. Well, like you. Not, that's not... I watched four episodes, yeah, by whatever. the way. And that show just didn't have anything for me. Here's my gripe. And it has nothing and to do with... And I oh, struggled... Okay, I struggled through that 20-plus episode season of Gotham. And I'm still not exactly sure... I liked it. I didn't watch... I watched of 90% of it. I didn't... I did not... not so did you I watch like all of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? No. I fell off. Just because it's just... I just haven't had time to sit and watch. I want to go back and watch it. I watched the beginning of the first season and I watched the end of the season. I didn't watch the middle. I want to go back and watch. I just don't have the time. I'm just not interested. I want to watch it. I don't. I don't care. That's the problem. Here's my thing, really quick. Yeah. Um, and then I guess we could probably end with this. What are your thoughts on? I give my thoughts on this as I ask you the question. That ridiculously horrid looking red tornado for the Supergirl show. I didn't see it. Looks like he's wearing a foam suit. I man. did not see it. Really? Yeah, no, I've heard, but oh I, my I have God, not seen dude. it. Oh my God, dude. I was like, I seen it and I was like, really? This? Out of everything you can do in Hollywood, as far as like special effects or, or makeup, that's what you give me? I was totally unimpressed with the photo that was uh, shown online. And I believe it was CBR who probably posted it. Really? But I, I seen it and I was just like, that looks horrid. It's a guy, it's a bald guy wearing maroon colored makeup with like foam padding. I'm, I was like, I'm this, Googling right now. Be, uh, go ahead, Google, because it looks like crap. You should probably Google Red Tornado crap and it'd probably come up faster. What the hell? Let me see. Did you find it? Yep, that's the one. That's the one. Look at that. What are your thoughts on that? Please. What the hell is that? For those of you listening, uh, you guys should Google Red Tornado Supergirl, uh, CBS, and look at the image that comes up. Please. What do, What are your thoughts on this, Brian? Please. Now that you have, for the first time, seen this image. Sweet Jesus, I'm going to have to blog about this. this Thank is, you. Something to blog about. This is, <laughs> oh my God. I'm going to try like, not to. That's the point of the blog, man. I'm, 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 I'm so hard right now trying to not like just curse yeah just you know Save like it. a swear waste rant this is horrible yeah like this is horrible and what makes me angry is they were saying that the supergirl premiere the pilot whatever was pretty damn good it was and then they give us this it was good and then, I liked that, and then you're shown that yeah that's that's terrible that's like the vision's rusty grandfather right it's horrible. That is bad. Like, it's so bad. It's not even red. It's maroon. Right? It's totally not red. Yeah, is this the maroon tornado? I guess is so. Is he like his pissed off cousin? It's rusted tornado. Right? Look at that. It's awful. I can't wait to read your blog. I'll it be is honest. So awful. And I'm not even saying that because I'm trying to plug your blog for people to go over to comicsremix.com and check it out. I'm actually very interested in knowing, like, after I leave today, and you and you hit me up, and you're like, dude, it's up. I can't wait I, to actually sit and read what you really think about it, because you're going to have time to let it sink in and get your words together 
and formulate an opinion as opposed to just spouting it out here on the mic. Make sense? Yeah, no, totally. It's it's going to be interesting because I think it looks like just utter garbage. And I don't, like, wow. Yep. Like, <laughs> crap, man. Any, you know, any kind of, like, oh, man. hope I had for that show just kind of went down the toilet. Um, did they not learn anything from The Flash? Like, seriously, your plug of season one of The Flash DVD, go buy that. Dude, that is money. If you don't like that show, you don't like superheroes. Mm-hmm. Like, even if you are not a fan of The Flash, watch that show. It was great. Like, the character relationships were great. The acting is solid. Dude, the season finale will give you the feels. Yeah, hard. Yeah. Speaking of heroes, did you get to watch Heroes Oh, my Reborn? God. Thank you for bringing that up because it was in my mental list but not on my physical list. I did. What did you think? And I haven't watched it. Is, let me let me go on record as saying as much on this show as in the past when we first they first announced it and we talked about it. And I said it, there was absolutely no way that I was interested in watching that because of how crappy Heroes was. Not And we don't know my opinions. You could go back. I'll just state them now to save you some time. I like season one. Season two, not as much. Season three, oh, season four, awful. Right. So it was one of those shows that was a steady decline after the first season. Right. That said, I watched the two-hour premiere, and um, I'm I'm in. Okay. I'm in. So it far? was interesting. Um, does it pick up where season four left off? Or it is does it not pick up where they. I I actually was when it started. I when I got done watching, I googled where does Heroes Reborn fit into continuity wise. So they're treating this almost as if Heroes never stopped, and this would be the quote unquote season ten. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so we're missing so, six seasons. So, I believe um, five years, five to, five to ten years have passed. Okay. I think it's ten years since the end of... Season four. Season four. Okay. But it totally plays off that, like, you know, with Claire exposing herself to the world by throwing herself off whatever, and then everyone's stealing her heel on TV. Right. I don't know if you remember that's how Heroes ended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it it's, uh, doesn't pick off directly from there. I mean, things are obviously uh, different. There are some returning characters. Um, we've got HRG back, um, you know, Claire's father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, he's pretty much a main character, and then it's a bunch of new characters. The one thing I did feel, it's, it's got a very X-Men feel to the world. Okay. Um, because people know about, they call them Evos. Evolved, Evos? evolved, yeah, evolved humans. Okay. Um, there was it starts out with like a ceremony with uh, Evos and humans unite, and it's kind of like a celebration of them and like trying to, and then a, a, an explosion happens and a bunch of people are killed. Oh, so man. it's pretty much set up like, uh, much like the X Men are, where humanity does not trust these superpowered people. Gotcha. And super bad people kind of live in fear. They kind of hide their powers. Okay. Um, and someone's hunting them down at the same time. Uh, HRG doesn't seem to remember everything. Okay. So it's got it's got stuff for people that have watched the original that will pay off a little bit, but you don't need to know anything going in. So they've totally set it up for new fans to come in, and it's like clean, fresh, and... Pretty much, I feel like HRG is like the focal character that as he unfolds the mystery of what's going on, we're right there with him. Gotcha. As a fan. Okay. Um, he has been back. Uh, Hero Sword was in it. And uh, Mohinder. Was Hero in it? Hero was not in it. Okay. But his sword was. Okay. But I know from uh, teasers and commercials, he will be in the yeah. season. Yeah, I believe Matt Parkman will be making a return too, which I don't really think anyone cares about him. Um, there will be absolutely no Siler. Okay. Yeah. Siler, I read in uh, an article from uh, the, the, some of the creators of the show, producers. I'm not sure if it was Tim Crane himself, but Siler will not be. There will be no mention of Siler. Siler will not be on the show. Hmm. But uh, the the Haitian was on it. Okay. In the first episode, obviously, HRG, 
Uh, you know, you got some, uh, like I said, you got to see Heroes Nakamura's sword. Uh, I'm not sure if he has a daughter or not. Um, it was it was interesting. It was interesting. It was enough to keep me watching. Um, you know, uh, it's better than Fear the Walking Dead. <laughs> you like how I just brought that full circle? Yep. But the, so there's a lot of good comic book TV shows coming up in the coming months. You know, we've got the like you said, like we've plugged Flash, Arrow, um, iZombie. If you didn't watch the first side, too bad we can't sit here and say the same thing about the comic books. Yeah, no, you know that's that's the sad thing, and I think why this show was. Um, I really wasn't sure about what I was going to talk about coming into the day up to last night, and then I just delved in and found all of what we talked about, and that is because. I didn't want to sit here and do a whole episode talking about how much I currently hate comics. That's sad. When we're a comic book place. Yeah, when you're a comic book uh, brand. We are a comic book, a show by fans for fans. And the best thing I, as the host of the show, can say is that comic books suck right now. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I mean, there are a few. Uh, We can't even sit there and say comic books suck. Okay, yeah. Comic books suck is a blanket. The big two suck. I will say, though, that the redesign on uh, Spider-Man 2099's costume, I like that. It's pretty sweet. It's not bad. There's a lot of hate coming at it. All yeah. people are like, oh, 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 oh. Speaking of comics, I actually got a little comic. Invincible. Remember how I talked about they were going to reboot? Yeah. It happened. Yeah. And it's very interesting how it happened. It wasn't like a forest, and it doesn't feel like it's going to be permanent. Did they reboot with a new issue one, or is the numbering continue? No, the numbering is continued. Thank you. The numbering is continued. Something strange just happened, and Mark ended up getting sent back to the day that he got his powers. So he gets to relive everything. But over. he and he remembers everything. Nice, very nice. So it's very interesting. Um, that's a great comic, dude. If you ever, if like seriously, I don't feel like there's been a low point in that book. Kirkman has. Unlike Walking Dead, which has ebb and you know, yeah, it's been here up and, and down. Invincible has been solid. Turtles solid. Very. Um, I'm reading this interesting book currently called Mythic um, from Image. It's pretty good. Uh, there's dude, Image for me right now is where it's at. Yeah, there's a couple of independent creators that we want to have on the show. And I find myself being attracted to their stuff more because it hasn't been polluted by the mainstream. Right. You know, uh, you know, who I, I, uh, I'll save it for later, but or off mic. But never mind. Never but mind. I mean, there's there's a, a wealth of good stuff to find at Image. Uh, the Star Wars comics out of Marvel have been really solid. Um, that Kanan book. If you're a fan of the Star Wars Rebels cartoon on Disney XD. Which I highly recommend you check out as a Star Wars fan because it's been solid. Uh, Kanan is one of the main characters in that show. He's got his own book. It delves back into uh, the days right from, was it Order 66? Yeah. Uh, He was a Padawan during the Clone Wars. Okay. And it shows like his early days and it's now getting into current times. So he wasn't there when Anakin slaughtered all the Panawans. No, he was one. on a, he was with three. his master on another world. Gotcha. And uh it's really interesting, man. It's one of the darkest scenes in Star Wars history, whether you like that the the prequel trilogy or not. Yeah. You gotta admit, Anakin slaughtering those Padawans is a very dark scene. Those those younglings, yeah, yeah. That was that was hardcore, man. As horrible as it is I, for many years, was like, they should have showed him killing those kids instead of just like... And you know what? I've realized that... Uh, I know I'm getting off topic, but I just want to say this closing out. I probably could have saved it off mic, but I'm going to say it anyway. The way society is and what we've been given in movies has made us more bloodthirsty as audience members. Um, I was watching... I, I just recently watched Mad Max Fury Road. Okay. I did not like it. People, I have heard nothing but great things about it. I thought it sucked. Last, the other day, maybe two nights ago, I watched the original Mad Max. That is still, that movie's a classic. It's great. If you've never seen the original Mad Max with Mel Gibson, I know Mel Gibson has turned into a douche now. Look past it. I mean, if you'll still listen to Michael Michael Jackson, even though he probably touched little boys, give racist-ass Mel Gibson a pass and watch Mad Max. It's great. There's a lot of things that just alluded to and hinted at 
or off scene shown. And I totally appreciate that now more than I used to. All right. So the prequels are kind of getting to pass as I'm getting older. Gotcha. I still think episode one sucks. Though. Everybody does. Oh, and I feel bad that that kid died. Did he? He's dead. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Jake Lloyd passed. Wow. A couple weeks ago. I did not know that. Moment of silence for young Anakin Skywalker. Yeah. Yeah, apparently he had a lot of troubles in his life, man. Wow. And you know what? That's probably... We, we, we could probably hold some blame on that. I'm not saying us personally. I'm saying us, us blankets as fans. as fans. Because people were really hard on that kid. You know, and it's not his fault that that movie sucked. It's not his fault that his acting skills were... I mean, the kid was like 10 years old. Right. You know, I I, it's, I feel like it's I like... Didn't it, ha- see, my problem with episode one... Was the I, my problems weren't really Mannequin Skywalker as they like to call him back Mannequin then. Mannequin Skywalker. I mean, he was no. A little my kid. problem was the use, the the lack of use of Darth Maul mm-hmm. and Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, that was it. And the fact that like you could have done there's there was so much story to tell and then so much just crap that they decided to do. Yeah. Like, did we need the pod racing stuff? That was pretty cool. Visually, I mean, it was all right. It was cool. You know. There was too I much. I didn't mind the prequels not, though. Not I enough mean, with Darth Maul, dude. No, not definitely enough. not enough. That was, I think, my biggest gripe with it. I mean, I didn't have a problem. You know, you obviously have to tell the story of how he came to become Darth Vader. I didn't have a problem with the pre. Like a lot of it was shit too all over emo the for me. I was. All it right was. With it. I, I wanted his descent to be a little like more. I thought it was. You know, good. it was kind of like. Uh, I thought it was good. Like I felt like he had too much reservations. Into well, was, well, yeah, he was torn. going into the dark side. He did. Where I felt like it should have just been like rocket train to hell, dude. Nah. Like there should have been like something bad that happened and just set him off, and then he just went screaming into Vader. Nah, he couldn't. Instead, Only it because was of like, the way it happened in emotional. the original trilogy when he decided to turn and he dis- he killed Emperor Palpatine. Remember, so you knew there was always a hint of good still in him. So that shows. You know, you know there's this great theory about the the. Uh, about uh, him becoming Darth Vader and Padme and her death. Google uh, theories on Padme Amidala's death. Read it. I don't want to get into it now because it'll take too long. I'll have to. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about it when we get off mic here. But that's pretty much up for this week. Uh, join us back here next week when hopefully we'll have some comics to talk about. Um, you know. Comic recommendations, check out Fight Club 2 if you're a Fight Club fan. It's been pretty good. Yeah. Obviously Ninja Turtles, awesome. Um, yeah. Invincible, always quality stuff. Check out Birthright. Check out Mythic. Birthright's pretty good. Birthright's, uh, dude, loving Birthright. Loving it. Birthright's become like the book I look forward to every month. Nice. Um, honestly, I've I've cut down my reading on the big, I read, am now currently reading nothing from Marvel. I think I'm going to read... But X, the Star I'm going to check out X-Men 92. Yeah. I'm curious about that. I'm curious. No, I might check that out. It's just... It's all... It's garbage. It's garbage. I I didn't... There was no F word there. I was starting to... It, it didn't happen. But it's garbage. It's all hot, hot garbage. Well, all right. But uh, until next week and hopefully some more positive views on comics. Questions, comments, concerns, email us. Brian at Comics Remix, Junior at Comics Remix, Alex at Comics Remix... Comics Remix at gmail.com. Check out comicsremix.com for blogs and opinions. Um, check out The Lockup, which is our wrestling podcast that I host. Check out Let's Talk Toys whenever that decides to come out. It's a obviously pod, excuse me, podcast about toys. Um, yeah, that's... Uh, Tweet us, email us, Facebook us. Um, we're, we're very active on, on social media, yeah. especially on Mondays with Monday Night Raw for wrestling. Um, I'm usually on on Twitter while I watch Raw. I'm usually sending out tweets and stuff, so I, I'll respond right away. Uh, I'm trying to compile a list of horror comic books and what people read and what they liked for our Halloween special at the end of next month. If there's anything you'd like us to discuss or any mentions you think that are worth mentioning in the horror realm of comic books, hit me up on Facebook. Let us know. Yep. And uh, until then, we'll see you next week.